Sixers fans, where were you when Joel Embiid hit the second biggest shot in Philadelphia 76ers history? April 20th, 2022, he knocks it down. Unbelievable. What a poetic ending to a phenomenal game. I want to sit down and talk about the game real quick. I have to go to work in like negative 40 minutes, so I don't have a lot of time, but I really, really do want to talk about this game today. Um, Joel Embiid was phenomenal. In the first half, he had five points and four turnovers, and he looked like the same old guy we've seen in Toronto, playoffs after playoffs, the, the, the hardest place to play for that man in specific, and just the Sixers looked out of touch. I tweeted in the second quarter, all we have to do is weather this storm and we will cruise to a win. Well, I was partially right. We weathered the storm, but we sure did not cruise to any victories. I said at halftime, the Sixers are going to win this game. We were only down 10. Uh, the Raptors got some contributions from guys that are just playing outside of their mind right now, and that was the biggest punch the Raptors could possibly throw Philadelphia, and Philadelphia came back, fought through a game, did not lead until the uh, overtime period, and we won the game. And we won the game. This is the most uncharacteristic win that I've ever seen in my lifetime as a Sixers fan. This is a game that the Sixers just do not win ever, especially on the road, in the playoffs, at Toronto, one of the most hostile places to play in the NBA. The energy there was insane. The FU chance, the Embiid were wild. Um, truly a phenomenal game, a phenomenal game to watch. Great basketball. OG Ananobi played out of his mind. Gary Trent is an absolute bucket. Pascal Siakam was a ghost man in the fourth quarter, second half entirely, and overtime periods. I want to talk about Tobias Harris first, Tobias Harris's defense. The first three games of this series have been the best defensive stretch of his entire career. He looks quick. He's using his physicality as, as a pro for the first time, as a strength for the first time I've ever seen in my life. Tobias Harris is staying in front of defenders. He's playing phenomenal defense, and he has been locked down. He has been so good. He had 11 points and 12 rebounds. He only shot the ball nine times, but I think... Honestly, what is so huge for the Sixers team is Tobias Harris is finally realizing what his role is and what we need from him, and he is doing exactly that and some. He's been genuinely phenomenal um, in this series, yeah, truly. Harden had a great game. I really liked the way he played. Um, he shot the ball okay. He got to the rim, I think, better than he expected to. I think he's a little bit better physically than his mind allows him to be. Maybe that's just me, but I don't know. But he had a good game. Uh, he is the quarterback on this team. He let Embiid get going because he knew Embiid had to get going. Embiid is the MVP in this league, and Harden gave him a couple lobs early on when Embiid was struggling just to let him see the ball go through the hoop, and that means everything. As a guy who played high school basketball, <laughs> Um, not really a high level, but uh, high school basketball, it, it, it means a lot for a player who is struggling to, to see the ball go through the cylinder. It means everything. Um, it just, just to get that monkey off the back, it's that mentality type of thing. And Embiid picked it up, man. In the second half, he was just genuinely phenomenal. I mean, this, is, this honestly could be the next step for Joel. We could see the evolution of Joel Embiid even further because he... Seems to get that monkey off the back. I mean, and this was a really, really big chip on his shoulder. This is a place that owns him, man. And, and history is not kind to Joel Embiid in Toronto. It's not. It's not kind to the Sixers at all. And this win is a special, special win. Um, I had the Sixers in five originally. I don't see the Sixers losing a game now in the series. Maybe I'm wrong and I was right all along. <laughs> but either way, it's a win-win for me. Uh, Philadelphia just looked really, really good. Embiid... I mean, I don't know what else to say about him. I just, I want to appreciate the greatness. Nobody deserves this more than he does. He deserves to be happy with, with, with the way he played more than anybody I've ever seen play basketball. Nobody wants to win more than him. People have always knocked him for crying. People always knocked him for saying he wants the MVP. And I look at those things and I'm like, don't you want your best player to act like that? Don't you want your best player to just give 110% effort and, and give out everything to his craft? I don't know. I don't know. Embiid cares so much. He tries so hard. And it's just, it's really, really special when your best player has the effort that Embiid has. And it's why the Sixers are so good. It really is. I mean, Joel, L, Joel Embiid can carry this team as long as they let him. I, I, I don't think there's going to be a series this year that we don't have the best player on the court. That's how good he is. Um, Defensively, he was just genuinely phenomenal. I, I really believe he's probably our best perimeter defender when Matisse Thybul can't play. That's how ridiculous the seven foot two giant is. I mean, that's just how good he is. And 
I mean, we're going to talk about the MVP conversation and the All-NBA team conversation, but it's not that we're talking about playoffs here with Embiid and saying Jokic has had a bad playoffs, Embiid's had a good playoffs, Embiid should be MVP. This isn't new. Us Sixers fans have seen these plays every single night, night in and night out over the regular season, and it's just now that the world is finally seeing what we've been watching for the last 82 games. Embiid is the best player on the planet. He really, really is. There's a reason why every single NBA player votes for Joel Embiid to win MVP because they know basketball. The analytics and the nerds and the, the writers who could never make their freshman high school basketball team, they can vote for the guy they think has the cooler VORP. But who has the real Raptor? Joel Embiid because he's about to beat him 4-0 real quick. That dude is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Tyrese Maxey had a solid game. He wasn't great. He had a couple bad misses. He had a couple hard shots that he probably shouldn't have taken. Defensively, he wasn't phenomenal. He had a couple bad turnovers, but at the same time, he started off the overtime with a quick bucket, and that means a lot for when it comes to momentum. Uh, Maxi hit a couple of big shots when we needed him, but there was just nobody that could stop Embiid. The fadeaway elbow jumper he hit from the post was, or I mean, the toughest shot he took all night, which is insane because the guy hit a fadeaway freaking three-pointer in Fred VanVleet's eye to win the game with .7 seconds left. It, you don't see seven foot two players play like that. You don't. You don't see guys that tall but that magnitude of size be that good in the perimeter. You don't. I will take Embiid over Jokic any day of the week. I don't care how many MVPs Jokic ends his career with. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Embiid will always be the better player in my mind. Jokic is a phenomenal player. He's going to be an, a, a, an all-time great big man at the end of the day, but he's not as good as Embiid. There's nobody right now in the world that plays better basketball than Joel Embiid who wants to win more than Joel Embiid. And the rest of the guys, they came up clutch when we needed them to. Niang was huge. He hit three threes that were just seemed like the best time three-pointers of the night every single time. I mean, what can I say about Embiid? Really, the Sixers are one game away from moving on. And Embiid is about to take off the biggest monkey off his back and beating a Toronto Raptors team who I know damn well he remembers what happened a couple years ago. Nobody deserves that buzzer beater in that arena more than that guy. Let's enjoy it. Let's be grateful. Let's appreciate his greatness because, you know, the first two years of his career, we, when is he going to play? When is he going to play? He's never going to play. Yeah, he could be good, but he's only going to play 20 games a year, this and that. And then it was Sarge is never coming over and this and that and this. Now Embiid has been healthy, knock on wood, for two years now. He's the healthiest he's ever been. He's dealing with a couple injuries, but there's nobody in the playoffs right now that's not dealing with some injuries. And he is playing the best basketball than anybody else on the planet Earth right now. Enjoy it. Peace.